there is a difference between a group and a team. We ask people to define team, and inevitably they say, well, a team is a group of people who work together to achieve a common goal. And if that were true, then 40,000 marathon runners would be a team. There are people who are working together in close proximity. They're all pursuing the same goal. I want to finish this race. And we could say that they're a team. But I don't think anybody would argue that a group of marathon runners are a team. Something is missing. Here are the elements, the three elements that you must have if you're really going to be a team as opposed to a group. You must be working interdependently. We must create interdependent relationships. I can run my marathon and I can achieve my goal regardless of what happens to anybody else in the race. But if I were a member of a team, I would have to rely on other people in order to achieve the goal. And they would need to rely on me. So we would have an interdependent relationship. We would have a goal. You can't be a team without a goal. And it would be a goal for which we are mutually accountable. That would make us a team. And unfortunately, in schools all across America, we have settled for working in groups as opposed to truly creating collaborative teams. Now, here's an analogy that I think makes the point. Here are two of the greatest athletes ever to play in their respective sports. And I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan, clearly two of the best who ever played their sports. And when they turned professional, ironically, both of them announced when they turned professional, that they shared the same goal. And the goal was, I'm turning pro because I want to win championships. That's how I'm going to define myself. I want to win championships. Now, when Tiger Woods steps onto a golf course to compete in a tournament, he's never working in isolation. He's always part of a group, a collegial, congenial group. That foursome on the golf course, those other golfers that are out there, they can get along just great. But he can accomplish his goal of winning the championship regardless of what happens to any other golfer on that golf course. He can do it all by himself. Michael Jordan, arguably the greatest basketball player ever to play in the NBA. And in 1988, he did something that's never been done before or since. Not only was he the most valuable player of the year, not only was he the leading scorer of the year, the best offensive player of the year, He was also named as the best defensive player of the year. So that one man was the strongest force on both offense and defense in the entire NBA, and yet he did not accomplish his goal. Nor did he accomplish his goal for any of the first six years that he was in the league. Now, why not? He was just as skilled and gifted in basketball as Tiger Woods was in golf. Why wasn't he able to accomplish his goal? Because Michael Jordan was a member of a team, Tiger Woods is a member of a group. There is an enormous distinction. Jordan had to rely on other people to accomplish his goal, and until that, that team could gel, they couldn't accomplish his goal, no matter how brilliant he was. Now, you may be the Michael Jordan of teaching. I doubt it, but you may be. My point is, no matter how brilliant you are as an individual, that does not mean you have a good team or even a good school. It's going to require a collective effort. So here is...